Topping America's most wanted list right now is this 500-pound bear named Hank the Tank. Hank has made quite a name for himself by breaking into dozens of homes near Lake Tahoe on the hunt for food. Yeah, and Hank may look like a giant teddy bear. I think that's where the bear hug <laughs> phrase came from. But hey, wildlife officials want to stop the break-ins, and so far no one has been able to catch the elusive bear. And the question remains, once they do catch Hank, where should he go? Joining us now from Colorado, the director of the Bear League, Ann Bryan. Ann, thanks for joining us. A very contentious issue we're talking about tonight. Yes, it has been. Uh, it, you know, Tahoe people love their bears. And when the Department of Wildlife talked about killing Hank, uh, everybody just went off the charts and uh, they weren't going to let him be caught and euthanized. So we're kind of at a standstill right now, but we're working on solutions. And this is a big boy we're talking about, and he's been a bit of an outlaw lately. He's been on the escape, essentially, over the last several weeks. What's the latest update on Hank right now? Hank is still at large, as well as being <laughs> large. <laughs> and and he's, uh, he's due back into this particular neighborhood tomorrow afternoon because that's when it's garbage day and everybody puts their trash out and Hank knows it and that's how he's made his living. So he'll be back tomorrow and we're worried about it. Uh, he has a couple of different neighborhoods he hangs out in. Uh, he's fine. The traps are not set for him at this point and we're working on finding a solution so that he can live but not wild and free. Yeah, there's a lot of layers to this issue. And we look at Frank, he is huge. He's a massive bear. And you pointed out he is eating primarily human food. Um, and want to also point out, he hasn't hurt anybody at this point, but he has broken into quite a few homes and he's quite okay with seeing people. How common is it for a bear this size to be floating around and comfortable in a residential neighborhood? At Tahoe, none of our bears are skinny. We've got bears that have been upward of 900 pounds. So Hank is, he's, he's heavy for his height. <laughs> it's like a little short man that's 5'7", <laughs> <seven, you know, laughs> weighing uh, 300 pounds. He, he shouldn't be that heavy, that's for sure. But we do have bigger, uh, you know, fatter bears. And he lives, he's lived in this neighborhood his whole life, so he's used to people. He's comfortable with people. He's grown up with them. He thinks of them as his neighbor, uh, and they all think of him as their neighbor as well. So it's, it's kind of typical. If Tahoe's a little weird, you just have to understand that it's the Tahoe National Forest. Those of us who live here, we love our wildlife, and we maybe go a little overboard to try and protect them. And I have a couple of pugs that are of uh, the stature that you're describing, and I think the culprit yeah. with them it's people food, and it sounds like that could be the story here that's leading Hank out of his natural habitat and into people's homes. Is that the problem? Absolutely, and I have a bulldog, and he feels the same way as your pups do. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, when, when the food is easy and when it's got a lot of calories in it and a little effort to get at, then, you know, they're in it. They're, they're all for it. So Hank figured that out a long time ago that, you know, a door with his size was easy to just push down a window, you know, just open it or knock it in. And there's going to be food in the refrigerators and it's going to be like 40 to 60,000 calories in a refrigerator and a freezer. So he he's no he's no dummy. He wants to make it easy for himself. It's mm -hmm. a lot harder to go pick one berry at a time off of the bush. Yeah, I mean, he's actually, he's adapted to his surroundings. And I'm with you, Anne. Humans, animals, wildlife, we got to coexist and we got to find a way. Of course, we never want to see any animal killed unnecessarily. So what would be the options for Hank if he is found, if he is captured? How can we keep him alive? What, what needs to happen? So we don't believe in relocation because to take a bear from his natural uh, uh, where he grew up and where he knows every tree and every stream and every, you know, berry bush and take him into the middle of nowhere, usually they die or they die trying to get back home. So that's cruel and we don't appreciate it. And in, neither does our Department of Wildlife. They agree that that's not a good choice. So a sanctuary. And we've got mm -hmm. five sanctuaries lined up that are all accredited. We've taken several bears to them in the last 20 some years that I've been doing this. 
they are wonderful. And the bears have their own enclosure and they've got their own hot tub and they have somebody that brings them food several times a day. Hank would love that. So that's what we're looking at. You know, a nice accredited reputable sanctuary that can take Frank. And like I said, we've got five of them right now, two out of state, three within the state. They're, they're looking at Send him over. We love Hank. We'll and take yeah. him. We'll, we'll take good care of him. They're yeah. equipped with a hot tub. Sounds like these are pretty good accommodations that we're talking about. We hope that's how this story ends. And we're going to stay with it. That's Bear League director Ann Bryant getting us up to speed on the nation's most famous bear at this point. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate you. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way. So make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.